Assalamu alaikum, I am Dr. Rabia Sajad from Anatomy Department, Sahara Medical College. Today the topic of discussion is um, back of thigh in gross anatomy or we can also call it the posterior compartment of thigh or hamstrings compartment. We are going to discuss uh, all the contents of this compartment individually and then the um, clinical anatomy related to these contents. The diagram is a midsection of thigh, 15 centimeter almost below the inguinal ligament, and it shows the cut section of femur here. And then we can see the region of uh, linea aspera here, and the three main septa arising from facial atta and uh, inserting on the linea aspera, medial lip, lateral lip and the intermediate region are the medial, lateral and posterior intermuscular septum. Here we can see the medial intermuscular septum uh, and then we can see the lateral intermuscular septum here and then the posterior intermuscular septum here. Separ These septa separate anterior compartment of thigh here you can see all the muscles, rectus femoris, vastus medialis, intermedius, lateralis. And then we can see the medial compartment of thigh including gracilis, adductor longus, brevis and magnus. Then we can see the posterior compartment of thigh which are hamstrings here shown by bicep femoris. Then semitendinosis, semimembranosis is not shown here. Part of adductor magnus is also in the hamstrings. Um, and then you can see a main content, a large nerve, the shatic nerve. So again, uh, enumerating the contents of uh, posterior compartment of thigh, we include hamstring muscles. Here you can see bicep femoris, semitendinosis, semimembranosis, and ischial part or hamstring part of adductor magnus then we have the arteries supplying the posterior compartment mainly branches of deep uh, femoral artery or profunda femoris artery then we have the nerve uh, which is the largest nerve of the body the shatic nerve now as discussed in klm hamstrings have some common properties and their proximal attachment is from ischial tuberosity mainly and uh, exception is the short head of bicep femoris which is arising from the femur other than that uh, semitendinosis semimembranosis and the long head of uh, bicep femoris and the hamstring part of adductor magnus they all are arising from tibial tuberosity now they are inserted on the bone of leg um, mainly uh, lateral hamstrings uh, are un inserted on the fibula while the medial hamstrings are inserted over tibia again we have an exception that the ductor magnus uh, does not cross knee and it is inserted on the adductor tubercle then the innervation of hamstring is from the tibial part of uh, shatic nerve. Here there is another exception, bicep femoris, uh, short head, supplied by common peroneal nerve or common fibular nerve, while long head is uh, supplied by the tibial nerve as with the other hamstrings. Now the hamstrings, um, are going to cross two joints the hip joint and knee joint so they are going to act on both the joints if uh, the thigh is fixed or the hip joint is fixed they are the flexors of knee joint and if the knee is fixed as in standing condition they are basically the extensors of hip joint or if the hip and knee both are fixed they can extend the trunk a very important point to remember is that um, uh, on walking uh, in, on a smooth plane, hamstring are basically the active muscles uh, responsible for extension. 
while on inclined plane and climbing stairs or acting against gravity we know that gluteus maximus muscle is the main extensor so standing still or walking on the smooth uh, ground on a leveled ground the hamstring muscles are responsible for these postures Now talking about the lateral hamstrings first lateral hamstrings include bicep femoris it is a two headed muscle it has long head and short head the long head uh, along with other hamstrings is arising from its tuberosity here while the short head is an exception and it arises from the linea aspera uh, and close to the lateral lip now insert of the um, bicep femoris is on head of fibula this insertion is interrupted by a lateral collateral ligament or fibular collateral ligament and thus there is an extension from this insertion onto the tibia as well the long head is supplied with the other hamstrings by the tibial part of sciatic nerve while the short head is an exception and is supplied by the common fibular part or common peroneal part of the sciatic nerve now um, the action of bicep femoris uh, with the other hamstrings as we have discussed that uh, there is extension of hip and then if that is uh, hip joint is fixed then there is flexion of knee and as this muscle is uh, going from the back of the thigh towards the lateral aspect contraction of this muscle can also cause rotation of uh, uh, tibia towards the lateral side or rotation of leg towards the lateral side of the medial hamstrings the um, one lying superficial with a smaller belly here and the long uh, tendon of insertion is the semi tendinosus muscle it is going to take origin from ischial tuberosity the insertion is on the medial surface of medial condyle and shaft of a tibia here it is inserted along with two other muscles of anterior and medial compartment of thigh sartorius gracilis and uh, all three are called pescens serenus or um, guy ropes being a typical hamstring it is supplied by the tibial part of sciatic nerve and uh, it is going to extend the hip joint flex the knee joint and being a medial hamstring it is a medial rotator of leg at knee joint due to its long cord like tendon it is named as semi tendinosus the second medial hamstring which is lying deep to the semi tendinosus is semi membranosus as its origin is uh, like broad expanded membrane and it is a broad uh, muscle lying deep to semi tendinosus so that's why it is called semi membranosus origin is from uh, ischial tuberosity and insertion has some specific points at um, one part of insertion mainly is on the posterior aspect of uh, medial condyle of tibia here shown as semi membranosus tendon some fibers are reflected from the tendon and are inserted on the popliteal fascia which are not clearly shown here and the third point is that um, some fibers of uh, semi membranosus tendon are reflected from here and are inserted on the capsule of um, knee joint on the posterior aspect and here you can see them they are called oblique popliteal ligament semi membranosus is supplied like other hamstrings by tibial portion of uh, sciatic nerve it extends the thigh at hip joint it flexes the leg at knee joint and it is a medial rotator of leg especially in mid flexed uh, position and uh, through oblique popliteal ligament it is going to reinforce the capsule of uh, knee joint posteriorly now adductor magnus muscle has two parts the adductor part is arising from the uh, common ischiopubic ramus and inserted on the linea aspera 
while the hamstring part which we are going to discuss here is arising from ischial tuberosity you can see here and then this part is inserted on the adductor tubercle and uh, the nerve supply of this part is from the tibial part of the uh, sciatic nerve while the adductor part is supplied by obturator nerve the action of this part is extension of thigh at hip joint and this muscle is not going to act on knee joint and there is no rotation produced by this muscle at knee joint here we can see that uh, from femoral artery there is a large branch arising called profunda femoris artery or the deep uh, femoral artery this artery gives rise to three perforating uh, branches and then is continued as the fourth perforating artery itself the four perforating arteries they are going to interrupt or perforate the aponeurotic insertion of a ductum magnus as seen in this diagram and then supply the hamstrings after giving the muscular branches these perforating arteries are going to anastomose with each other and then superiorly with the gluteal arteries and inferiorly with the popliteal artery so you can see that there is a continuous arterial channel formed by the anastomosis of uh, these perforating arteries with each other and with the gluteal arteries and popliteal artery so there are two anastomoses formed between uh, on the back uh, one is uh, in the gluteal region which is called trochanteric anastomosis this anastomosis is formed between the deep branch of superior gluteal artery and uh, also from the ascending branches of uh, medial and lateral circumflex femoral arteries then there is a cross-like anastomosis overlying the uh, region of uh, lesser trochanter this is called cruciate anastomosis superiorly we have a descending branch from the inferior gluteal artery inferiorly we have an ascending branch from the first perforating artery then we have two transverse branches from medial and lateral circumflex arteries and this cross is formed here then the third anastomosis is between the perforating arteries as we have discussed here all the perforating arteries are connected to each other and also to the popliteal artery by a descending branch here The superficial and deep venous drainage of lower limb and the lymphatic drainage will be discussed uh, in details separately. The superficial veins drain into two large veins, uh, the great saphenous vein and the small saphenous vein. While the deep veins here in the thigh you can see are uh, forming the profunda femoris vein, the deep vein of thigh. And this is going to be drained in femoral vein. The femoral vein is going to be drained in external ileic vein and through common ileic vein to inferior vena cava. And the lymphatic drainage is also superficial to the superficial inguinal lymph node and the deep is to the ileic lymph nodes. The cutaneous innervation of uh, this uh, back of thigh is through posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh which arises from the sacral plexus, the anterior rami of S1, S2, S3, as previously discussed with the sacral plexus. The posterior cutaneous nerve enters the gluteal region uh, through greater sciatic foramen, inferior to piriformis muscle, and uh, then it uh, enters the back of thigh, where it pierces the facial lata to innervate the back of thigh. Um, the main uh, part here shown in purple is supplied by the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh while some parts on the medial side is uh, extended onto the back of thigh from the obturator nerve and some cutaneous branches from the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh also extended from the lateral to posterior side. Other than that the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh also supplies the inferior quadrant of um, a gluteal region as we can see here now we discuss the most important uh, nerve or most important structure of lower limb uh, which 
is going to be present in the back of thigh, the sciatic nerve. On our YouTube channel, we keep coverage of pathology and physiology, and a growing collection of pharmacology. Try it free today! Sciatica is a condition where there's pain that starts in the lower back, which then travels down the leg. Since the pain is associated with injury or compression of the sciatic nerve and follows the path of the sciatic nerve, it makes sense to name it sciatica. The sciatic nerve is the longest and widest nerve in the body. It's formed by the spinal nerves L4, L5, and S1, 2, and 3, which leave the spinal canal through the intervertebral foramen, an opening located between the vertebrae and behind the intervertebral discs. These nerves travel to the area in front of the sacrum and join to make the sacral plexus. All the nerves in the plexus, except S3, are split into two divisions, anterior and posterior. Anterior divisions of the L4, L5, S1, S2, and the entire S3 nerve create the tibial nerve, while posterior divisions of the L4, L5, S1, and S2 form the common fibular nerve. These two nerves are bound together by connective tissue and make up the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve then passes beneath the piriformis muscle and through the greater sciatic foramen, which is an opening formed by the pelvic bone, sacrospinous, and sacrotuberous ligaments. It then travels down the back of the thigh to the back of the knee, where it splits into the tibial and common fibular nerves. The sciatic nerve innervates the muscles in the back of the thigh. The tibial nerve innervates the muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg and intrinsic flexors of the foot. The common fibular nerve is in charge of the muscles in the anterior and lateral compartments of the leg and intrinsic extensors of the foot. Now each spinal nerve is in charge of the sensation of a specific area of the skin, called a dermatome. Dermatomes of the spinal nerves of the sacral plexus cover almost the entire surface of the thigh, leg, and foot. L4 covers the medial side of the leg, L5 covers the lateral side, S1 covers part of the dorsum and the entire sole of the foot, S2 covers the back of the leg, while S3 covers the back of the thigh. Skin sensations like touch, temperature, pain, and pressure are carried to the spinal cord and then to the brain where we register the sensations. Sciatica occurs when there's irritation to any part of the sciatic nerve or the spinal nerves that form it. The causes of sciatica can be divided into two groups, spinal and non-spinal. Spinal causes are related, obviously, to the spinal column. The most common one is intervertebral disc herniation, the intervertebral discs lie between vertebrae and act as shock absorbers. Each disc is made of two parts, the outer fibrous ring called the annulus fibrosus and the inner gel-like pulp called the nucleus pulposus. Poor posture, traumas, physical activity, and strong rotational movement can cause herniation where the disc bulges out in one direction. If it bulges out towards the center of the spinal cord, it could compress multiple nerve roots on both sides, or laterally, compressing one nerve root on one side. In some cases, the nucleus macrophages attack the nucleus pulposus and start secreting inflammatory cytokines, like tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-1 and interleukin-6. The inflammation and swelling which result from this reaction compresses the nerves even further. Another cause of nerve compression is spinal stenosis, which is the narrowing of the spinal canal or intervertebral foramen. This is often due to degenerative disorders of the bone, trauma, or inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. Spondylolisthesis is a condition where one vertebra slips or becomes displaced due to a trauma, surgery, or degenerative spinal disease and presses on the nearby nerve roots. Finally, any growths within the spinal canal, like tumor, cysts, or abscesses, can cause compression of the spinal nerves.
non-spinal causes occur outside of the spinal region and cause compression or damage to the sciatic nerve itself. The most common one is piriformis syndrome. The piriformis muscle and sciatic nerve are very close to each other. So, if the piriformis muscle gets irritated, it can cause muscle inflammation or muscle spasms that can compress the sciatic nerve. A more recent phenomenon is the so-called wallet sciatica, or credit carditis. Many people carry their wallets or other objects in their back pockets. So when they sit down, these objects put pressure on the gluteal muscles which compress the sciatic nerve, causing sciatica. Pregnancy is another potential cause of sciatica. When sitting, the fetal head presses down on the sciatic nerve, on the area just before it exits the pelvis. Other non-spinal causes include trauma to the leg and pelvic tumors, which can damage or compress the nerve directly. In sciatica, the main symptom is aching and sharp leg pain. It radiates along the middle or lower buttock, and on the back or the outer side of the thigh. Below the knee, the pain usually follows the dermatome distribution. For example, if the L4 nerve root is compressed, the pain would radiate alongside the medial side of the leg. If the S2 nerve root is compressed, the pain would mostly be felt along the back of the leg. This pain could begin suddenly, usually with disc herniation, piriformis syndrome, or trauma. It could also develop slowly, like if it's caused by a tumor or spinal stenosis where the pain increases over time. Sciatic pain is typically unilateral, meaning it's only located on one side. Bilateral sciatica, where both legs are affected, can occur with central disc herniation, lumbar stenosis, or spondylolisthesis. Sometimes the pain can be accompanied by other sensory or motor dysfunctions like numbness, motor weakness, and reduction or loss of reflexes. S1 spinal nerve compression affects the ankle jerk reflex, while L4 nerve compression affects the knee jerk reflex. To diagnose sciatica, there are some classic physical exam findings. The Lasegg sign, also called the straight leg raise test, is most often used to check for spinal causes. In this test, a person lays down on their back and an examiner lifts each leg with the knee straight. This stretches the nerve roots over the herniated disc or the object causing compression. If the sciatic pain worsens when the legs are between 30 and 70 degrees, the test is positive. Finally, a CT or MRI should be done to look for the cause. Sciatic pain caused by inflammation often resolves on its own over time. With pain medication and anti-inflammatories, the pain can be relieved in a few weeks to a few months. Surgical treatment is required if the sciatica was caused by tumors, cysts, abscesses, or injury to the spinal cord. Alright, as a quick recap. Sciatica refers to aching and sharp leg pains that radiate below the knee. It is caused by irritation or damage to the sciatic nerve and spinal nerve roots of the sacral plexus, most commonly as a result of disc herniation. Typically, the pain resolves on its own over a few weeks to months, but sometimes surgery is required. Thanks for watching. A quick recap of sciatic nerve. The origin of sciatic nerve is from sacral plexus. You can see here the combined root value is L4, L5, S1, S2, S3. And you can see that the anterior divisions of the primary rami of L4, L5, S1, S2, S3, all of them give uh, origin to tibial part of sciatic nerve while um, posterior uh, deviants of the anterior MI L4, L5, S1 and S2 gives origin to common fibular part. S3 is completely part of tibial nerve. So sciatic nerve is the largest branch of sacral plexus and it is the largest and thickest nerve of the body. In pelvis, you can see the location of sciatic nerve and sacral plexus here. The uh, anterior rami are emerging from the pelvic foramina and they are making sciatic nerve here. 
and then um, sciatic nerve is going to pass uh, above the piriformis to exit the greater sciatic foramen. Sciatic nerve leaves the uh, pelvis by passing through the greater sciatic foramen below the piriformis and then in the gluteal region it is lying midway between the greater trochanter and ACL tuberosity and it is lying superficial or posterior to the short rotators while it is lying deep or under cover of gluteus maximus muscle and then in the back of thigh it is lying on um, adductor magnus muscle or it is uh, posterior to the adductor magnus muscle and uh, part of it is overlapped by the long head of bicep femoris here it is removed and um, at the superior angle of uh, popliteal fossa the sciatic nerve is going to be divided into its terminal branches the tibial part which is going towards a uh, posterior compartment and then the common fibular part which is winding around the neck of fibula. Here we will only discuss the distribution of sciatic nerve in thigh. The rest of its distribution will be discussed with the leg. In thigh there is no cutaneous distribution of sciatic nerve. Um, but muscles uh, of posterior compartment of thigh that are hamstrings are supplied by sciatic nerve. Here the hamstring part of adductor magnus, the long head of bicep femoris, the semitendinosus and semimembranosus is supplied by the tibial part uh, while the short head of bicep femoris is supplied by the common peroneal part of sciatic nerve. As discussed in the video previously shown uh, that there are many causes of sciatic nerve injury uh, most frequently injured by a wrongly placed intramuscular injection in the gluteal region and uh, the safe uh, area is in the upper uh, outer quadrant of the buttock uh, and as the common peroneal nerve lies superficial in the uh, packed sciatic nerve it is more frequently damaged and results in foot drop. Other causes are also posterior dislocation of hip joint uh, as uh, you can see occurring in this uh, trauma. The spinal causes have already been discussed. Mainly lumbar uh, disc herniation is a cause of uh, shatika also. Effects of sciatic nerve include uh, motor injury, um, there is wasting of the muscles supplied by sciatic nerve especially below the knee, the leg muscles and the uh, muscles of the posterior compartment of uh, thigh are paralyzed but gluteus maximus is intact so there is weak extension of hip and sartorius gracilis are intact so there is weak flexion of knee. Then we can see in the diagram here that uh, with the paralyzed um, muscles when the patient lifts the foot there is no dorsiflexion or there is foot drop causing a stamping gait. As static nerve is not supplying the skin of thigh, the loss of sensation uh, of skin is below the knee except for this blue area on the medial side of leg and uh, down up to the medial border of uh, foot up to big toe. This area is supplied by the saphenous nerve which is a branch of femoral nerve. Other than that, all the um, cutaneous innervation of the leg will be uh, non-intact. As discussed before, uh, shatika is the pain that is uh, experienced on the buttocks and posterior aspect of thigh and leg, especially on the lateral side of leg. And uh, this pain is a result from a compression or injury to shatik nerve. Here again we can identify the various causes of shatika. Uh, we can see a prolapse of an intervertebral lumbar disc and pressure on the roots of uh, lumbar and spinal uh, sacral plexus. Then we have uh, an intrapelvic tumor which is 
uh, uh, causing pressure on the sciatic nerve arising from the sacral plexus and then we hear uh, direct uh, inflammation or injury of sciatic nerve uh, results in sciatica Another uh, important clinical aspect is hamstring injuries and the posterior compartment of thigh. Hamstring injuries are related to the injuries of hip joint and you can see here um, it usually occurs in footballers and basketball players with sudden jerky flexion and extension of uh, hip joint. You can see hamstring uh, can tear off from their origin and, uh, and we can also see fracture of ischial tuberosity by the pull of hamstrings.